Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crowley. I'm back with another video. Today I want to show you my top 10 Easter eggs, the little things that I've hidden away in my comics over the course of my entire career. We're going to start with my very first comic, The Beast That Ate Morioka. It wasn't published first, but it was the first one that I finished uh, uh, you know, the whole story and then later on after Akiko made it into print. I was able to get this one published and down here in this frame in which we see the beast Snorky tearing up the town there is a tiny little sign here that says Hoka Hoka Bento uh, and uh, this actually is a little bit of a reference to a local bento shop fast food basically where I would uh, routinely grab my dinner uh, on the cheap and what I'm going to do right now is splice in the logo of uh, Hoka Hoka Bento so you can see what their signage looks like these days. So there you go, Hoka Hoka Bento. Those of you living in Japan, let me know if they still have that. I liked this image so much I put it right there on the front cover. So there you go. Uh, a sort of a double Easter egg <laughs> hidden in plain sight. Let's move on to the next one. So next up we come to Akiko, my long-running uh, comic book series. Loads and loads of different uh, Easter eggs hidden over the course of like the 53-issue run uh, of this series. But I thought I would begin with this one or just choose this representative one that comes from issue 47. And here you see my Hello Twitty stationery for the fresh up to your stationery life. Uh, <laughs> So any of you uh, Sandio fans out there, uh, I thought you would get a kick out of that one. Don't know if this qualifies as an Easter egg. It's pretty front and center. Some of these things are stretching the definition. But let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So next up in terms of comics, we have Miki Falls. And uh, there were loads of little uh, Easter eggs to choose from, but I thought the best one would be this winter version uh, of the hillside as they go running up these steps, these two characters, there tucked away on the side is our good friend Totoro in statue form. I love the idea of there being a Totoro statue hidden in the woods. But there you go, there's one for all you Ghibli fans. Now this is not a comic book, but uh, after Miki Falls I was hired to do new illustrations for the enormous egg. Uh, and I had fun with this illustration in which the main character is talking to like a TV producer. Uh, so I went in and put celebrity photos in the background. And if you look very closely you can see uh, at least four different faces that would have been famous back in the 1950s. So we've got Milton Berle, Lucille Ball, John Wayne, and my personal favorite, Nat King Cole. Now this is kind of washed out, so I'm going to splice in a more contrasty version right now so you can see uh, with greater clarity those faces. So there you go, a few different uh, 1950s Easter eggs hidden in that pic. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Next up we have Brody's Ghost, and there were plenty of uh, different Easter eggs to choose from this one, but I thought I'd go ahead and show you like a two-page sequence where we see one right after the other. Right here we see the name of a podcast that I listened to a lot while I was working on this series called Film Spotting. And uh, so yeah, I got most of their logo in there uh, in the upper corner. And on the very next page we have one that is filled with quite a number of uh, little references. This building, and the closer you look, the more you will see. Um, perhaps the most obvious one is this YouTube logo. Of course I was uh, indebted to YouTube. Uh, in many ways. This one is interesting because it is the Coca-Cola logo except uh, in Hindi. <laughs> you know, I had this idea of the future and all these different languages blended together. And uh, down here for all you Chicagoans, we've got old style beer. Surviving deep into the future. Uh, so yeah, that, that one's packed with little Easter eggs. Let's move on to the next one. So next up we have the Mastering Manga series and there are plenty of little Easter eggs hidden throughout uh, this three book series. This, I don't even know if this counts because it is so much an inside reference, <laughs> but I thought it would be fun for you to see. This uh, series of numbers that I've written in here that is from my three point perspective uh, exercise. It says SK10 
4XJ. Um, this is actually the postal code of a good friend of mine who lives in England. Uh, and uh, what I did is I came back with this next book, Mastering Manga 3, uh, and I decided to return to the exact same Easter egg, this time much more in plain sight, right on the arm of this uh, lovely alien girl. It, of course, says once again, SK-10 4XJ. Maybe she came from that space station. <laughs> Sounds like I've got a new novel to work on. So here's the drawing lesson, my graphic novel that teaches you how to draw. And we've got a couple of things to point out here in this frame. Over on the right you see Storbeck's Coffee, which is, I think is an obvious reference to Starbucks. But over here I think is something that's a little more Easter eggy. Gouache. Do you think it's a shop that sells only gouache? <laughs> I don't know if you can stay in business like that. Little by little we're getting closer to the present day, my last summer with Cass. Uh, a number of different things hidden in here, but with this page you can have a peek at the window and see that the name of this record shop is Krill Dog Vinyl. <laughs> of course it has to be written backwards from this point of view. Um, but interestingly this page, this original page, is currently for sale in my Etsy. So if there's any of you who like the look of this and would like to be the owner of the original, I will put a link uh, in the description of this vid where you can go and check that out. Next up is the comic book lesson, my graphic novel that shows you how to make comics. And early on we've got this movie theater, the Rialto, where there is a rather interesting selection of movies to see. Among them, Brody's Ghost. A uh, pretty <laughs> wishful thinking kind of reference with that one. It's still possible. Maybe someone will make a movie. And here we have uh, this uh, anime convention, which allowed me to do a whole bunch of different references, including, of course, the cat bus that you see right here. You know me and how much I love referring to Totoro. And on the very next page, I don't know if this counts as a um, Easter egg, because it's like a character almost in the story, but we've got this uh, reference to Alphonse Elric. And, of course, I didn't want to uh, be guilty of copyright infringement, so I changed lots of little things about that costuming. And the name is, of course, Elf Ans Ulrich. <laughs> so, that, I'm not uh, copying anybody's or infringing anyone's copyrights. And here we have uh, Hatsune Miku as well. So there you go, a whole bunch of uh, Easter eggs there in the comic book lesson. And finally, we come to Lost in Taiwan, uh, in which I have another one of these kind of insidery Easter eggs that you really almost have to uh, be in the publishing industry to uh, get the reference. But this little sign here, hidden among the Taiwanese signposts, says Colvin. And that is a reference to my editor, Andrea Colvin, a little of a tip of the hat. Uh, to her. And then this one, I don't think this really qualifies because it is just right there in front of you, but I thought you all would enjoy seeing how I snuck in a little reference to Akira with this uh, digital uh, bedside clock. And that, my friends, is the end of this video. I want to thank you all uh, for giving it a watch, and of course, you know, I've got links uh, if you become curious about any of these books. If you'd like to purchase it, I would be very, very grateful for that. But let's go ahead and wrap this up by saying once again, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back with another one real soon.